Um, were you a list maker before your characters? Are you a list maker now? A list maker? Uh huh. Like in your two novels, I read uh, Wheat Flower and, Ki and Kira Kira. You've got the list of the your 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 character has lists. Oh, you know. Um, yes, I am a list maker, and I I, I don't follow my list, but I I I, I, I have I have lists. Like if you would look at my desk, I have I probably have seven different lists, but I don't uh, I don't really and and some once in a while I'll cross something off one of the lists, but um, yes I am I'm I'm a compulsive list maker, <laughs> but I'm trying not to uh, have any more lists because it, uh, my editor says you know it's it's like killing it was like I have a novel where another sister dies. And we decided that was going to be the next novel that came out, actually, after uh, uh, Kira Kira. And she said, you know, you're going to be known as the dead sister novelist. So um, when it's kind of the same thing, we don't I want me to be the, like the list maker novelist or something. Did someone have a question there, Allison? Yes. Uh, yes. Um, I noticed that your son's name is Sammy. And that's one of the characters in Kira Kira. And I was wondering how often do you think of real people as you write your characters? Um, I would say about half the time I'm thinking of someone real. Um, in Wheat Flower, Bull and Ichido were, were based on photographs of, of actual people and um, of what I knew of those people and their personalities. So I would say, um, you know, about, about half the time, that, and then the other half, they're just completely um, you know, from that place that I, I, I don't know where they come from, really. I first of all want to thank you as an English teacher for including the idea that theme and meaning and how, how characters work, putting that in your book in such a way that students can relate that to their own lives. It isn't just something English teachers ask. <laughs> and I have a very simple surface question that I've been trying to think of a very philosophical way to ask, but it's not going to work. <laughs> so it's this, when you talk to kids about your books and they talk to you, does anybody ever ask you how Mr. Moto caught all those snakes? Oh, <laughs> um, no, but I, I asked the person who told me and um, I forgot what he said. It was some kind of stick with a lasso-like thing, or I forget what it was. I actually have some old emails. Um, I, I actually emailed this snake expert, <laughs> and um, he's the one who told me everything about snakes. He told me what they tasted like. He said, well, he said that he'd never eaten one, and he would never eat one because he, you know, the reason he studies snakes is because he loves them so much, and so he would never eat one but he knows people who's eaten them. And so he told me what they ate like and um, what they tasted like and things like that. Um, but uh, no, none of the kids have, has, has, ever, has ever asked me that. But, um, but I, I did ask, I did ask the, the snake man that. <laughs> Does anybody have a philosophical way of asking that? <laughs> uh, who has another question? But that's anybody kind have of, no, that, that is the kind of question that a kid would ask, actually. They're really interested in things like Here's that. Here's somebody else. And... Hello. I just wanted to ask if there were um, what adults um, or who inspired you, who supported you, were there teachers, was it mother, father, what adults were um, um, inspiring you to be a writer? I think, and I'm not sure if this is true today, but and certainly in my day, parents universally discouraged you from being a writer. Um, you know, they go to law school or whatever. And um, I, I think um, I was just—I was actually just telling um, Art that I googled this old teacher that I had um, named Dennis Gallucci. He was a teacher of mine at, at USC, and um, he had us read Raymond Chandler, who um, whose books have a very strong sense of place. And also, let us now praise famous men by James Agee, which was, um, I think, one of the books that changed my life. And, and um, I googled him, and I found him, and I wrote him a letter, and he emailed me back, and he said, "The funny thing is that he actually teaches my book in New York and wow. at, um, uh, at the school." <laughs> Anybody high up that we're leaving out that has questions? 
Okay. Uh, how do you pick your topics? Because they do seem to be somewhat different. Um, I think originally, especially most people's first books, well, not most people, but my first book was very much based on my um, my life. I, I don't know if, oh, I hate to say that because eh, it's not autobiographical. I, I hate it when people say that. I don't, I don't know why, but it drives me insane. But um, So I think, you know, it's, it's really hard because I want to write about um, Japanese and Japanese Americans, but I also, if I have something to say about something else, I want to write about that too. And um, the way I pick my topics right now, basically, is that I'll email my editor, um, you know, relentlessly and I, with all these different ideas. And sometimes she'll say that's a great idea, and sometimes she won't. Like for like for instance, I, I, I love dogs. I you know your your Jack Russell Terrier is a genius, I'm sure. And I um, <laughs> I love dogs, and I always wanted to write a book about dogs. So I spent a lot of time. She my editor didn't even ask me. I, I spent a lot of time writing this proposal about dogs from outer space. Which I, which I thought was like this, like the, the most darling idea ever. And um, so my editor thought it was like the stupidest thing she'd ever heard. And, um, and so really, everything that pops into my head, I, I email her and discuss it with her. And um, so it, it's kind of um, a give and take, I guess. Yes, here's one right here, Allison. Are there particular authors that um, influenced your writing? I would say James Ag. I would say Let Us Now Praise Famous Men was the um, the book that uh, influenced me the most because it just showed me that you could use language in a certain way that I hadn't really realized before. And um, another author who influenced me a lot was um, Joan Didion. Um, in fact, Dennis Felucci, who the, t the teacher I just mentioned, he was also um, a big Joan Didion fan. So, and they're, they're both nonfiction writers. Um, Raymond Chandler as well. That that was that was really the, one of the classes that um, that was one of the best writing classes I ever had. And so that that combination of teacher and books probably influenced me, um, was the first really big writing influence on me. Other questions? I have another question. Okay. Um, if a young person is interested in writing, what kind of process would you have them start? I mean, if, I mean they probably have a lot of ideas in their head, but what is there a process or is it something that you know, you've created, or do you have some kind of process that you'd recommend that would help them get there? Um, I've really changed a lot because when I started out, I was told make a mess and then clean it up. So when I started out, I would just write whatever came into my head, sort of. I would have kind of an idea of what I was going to do, but I would just make a mess and then I would hone it down. And now I'm, um, I'm incredibly anal, and I have to have these really perfect yes. proposals. <laughs> Lists, right? Lists, right? And, um, and you know, avoid those blue lines. And uh, <laughs> I, um, but but I think make a mess and clean it up is 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 better for um, you know when you're starting out. The other thing that someone told me that that. Uh, really changed me a lot was, uh, and then what I thought was really helpful was that um, if you're writing short stories, it's better, you'll learn more if you write 10 short stories than you will if, if you spend the same, if you spend 10 months writing one short story and trying to make it perfect. So, um, yeah, I guess that's the other thing.